Hey friends, Kim from Stamping Imperfection. Welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator and today I want to share with you how I'm going to make a beautiful scrapbook layout, a 12 by 12 layout, actually a double page layout, uh, without starting with a scrapbook kit. I'm starting with a pile of stuff that doesn't really, uh, wasn't intended to go together. Um, but I'm going to put it all together. It's stuff I've chosen from Stampin' Up! And uh, I have a little bit of, a couple of things from my stash I'm going to pull out. But I wanted to show you how I'm going to create a layout without having a scrapbook workshop kit or a, a scrapbook collection. So I've got a bunch of things I'm excited about. I have this month's paper pumpkin kit. This is from the April 2024, the Delicate Wings. I loved this stamp set and I especially love the little splatter stamp in there. So I'm thinking I might use that. I also pulled out this Layers of Beauty bundle. It's got the uh, the die set, the stamp set, and it's also got these fantastic layered stencils or layered masks that would allow me to quickly add color to those florals. So I love this. And um, I, I'm not sure I'm going to end up using it because it's not quite the style I'm looking for, but I pulled it out just in case because I love it so much. I have this mini alpha set, which I just got in April from the mini catalog. Um, then I bought this bird's eye view. I absolutely adored this. I got this in my starter kit. I adore the whimsical nature of this stamp set and I'm definitely going to use it. I've got the something fancy dies and the happy little things dies which I coordinated together in my little um, storage piece here. And I've got a magnet behind them both of these are still available online. They're not in the new catalog, but they're still available online. This is, to me, a golden uh, pair of die sets because I'm going to use this all the time. I have a couple places on the layout where I'm thinking about using that today. I did pull out some adhesives. I've got two different sizes of my uh, stamp and dimensionals. I've got my Tombow glue. I pulled out some old ribbon that I thought would coordinate well, these are all Stampin' Up! ribbons from like 2018 or before, but I thought it would coordinate really nicely with this really pretty, um, these flower flowering um, embellishments that they're selling. The, these are ephemera packs. You get eight sheets. There are four different sheets. You get two of each, and I'm super excited about this product. I think um, for eight bucks, you get a, like a, a great amount of stuff there. I pulled out three sheets of pattern paper from the Country Lace Designer Series paper. I pulled out one of the beige linen pieces and then I pulled out these two, I think of them as denim, and I love the peach dots on the back. And then from my stash I pulled out two pieces of linen 12 by 12 cardstock, which is old close to my heart cardstock. So I'm going to build my base with these denim and peach papers and then that linen paper, that beige linen pattern, I'm going to use um, as a mat behind my photos and uh, I'm excited about this layout. I created a sketch for today. This is sort of one of my go-to layout background layouts and then I do different things with the photos and this time I decided I want to use two three by four photos and I'm just going to put them in a straight line with my journaling so there's lots of white space here and the title is going to go below on one of the two pages I'm making for the second page and the second page is the page you're going to see me make in this video for the second page I'm going to kind of flip it so the wider piece will be at the top and the thinner piece will be at the bottom um, and I'm going to move that photo, that set of photos and stuff down a little bit on the second page. So I have two pages that coordinate but they're slightly different from each other. So I photocopied this um, color wheel from the catalog. This is page 132 in the new Stampin' Up! catalog and I actually used the digital catalog online. You can find that at shopwithkim.net. 
I just sent it to my printer. I put a piece of nice heavy cardstock in my printer, printed out the color wheel, and I have this smaller color wheel on my desk, which I use all the time. And I'm kind of lining it up here. I wanted to see how this worked with the color wheel from Stampin' Up! So I can actually use the color wheel with Stampin' Up! specific colors. So I'm lining up the blue with the blue on the color wheel from Stampin' Up! And I'll line up the or oranges on the other side and I can see what colors they're kind of saying uh, work together. So I can find some, I want an orangey color of cardstock that I can use sort of as an accent on my layout that will um, complement the blue that I have there. So I'm thinking that the one, I don't have a ton of colored cardstock from Stampin' Up! But I do have some stuff that I've had for a very long time and I have some Calypso Coral. So uh, I'm going to be able to use Calypso Coral. It'll work just fine here. I'm going to go ahead and cut out my pieces and um, you know do some stamping and all that stuff. I'm going to start putting my page together here. So I'm using that linen as the 12 by 12 background piece. And I've cut down this pattern paper to 11 by 11. And then I cut it uh, with a 5 inch piece and a 6 inch piece. So I have a 5 by 11 inch piece and a 6 by 11 inch piece. And I want the darker piece to be on top. I just liked the way, for some reason I found that very appealing. Uh, today when I was doing my layout to have the darker on the top and the lighter on the bottom. So I've already got some adhesive on the back of that lighter bit. I'm going to go ahead and lay it down. And um, I just liked the pattern this way a little bit better for some reason. It felt like it uh, went up this way. So I'm going to put that bottom piece down as well, but with the peach part facing up. I left a little gap between the two um, because I'm going to cover that up and I wanted to make sure I had fairly even borders. So I've cut that little a beige linen piece down to two six by nine and a half inch pieces. Then I cut the Calypso Coral. It was like six and a quarter by four and a quarter. So I've got two little photo mats. These are like three and an eighth by four and an eighth. And my photos will go on top. My photos will be three by four photos. And um, since I'm using this in a challenge, that it's called the challenge yourself it's a scrapbook layout challenge we would love to have you participate and um, you have to be in the photos so I will be in the photos so I did cut a piece of that Calypso coral and I'm using one of the little leftover pieces of that pattern paper on top of the Calypso coral so I've got that nice dark band of Calypso coral above and below it and around my photos so I've got a little bit of that going on then I had a like I had a very limited amount of the Calypso coral ribbon so I just cut it in half and part of it will be one end of it will be covered up nicely with some with an ephemera cluster so I'm going to put this down and that little silver buckle is a really uh, a can pop top lid there and I washed it up and I've had a jar of these sitting around for years upon years and I'm gonna go ahead and use that like a decoration so that's a little I used the um, something fancy dies I I die cut out a coral piece and a white piece in two different sizes of those dies then I had a, an old stamp from close to my heart with the lines which I very imperfectly stamped on that white piece and I'm pretty happy with how that came out that's a perfect place for my journaling and it varies a little in look from my photo but I really wanted to use the dies so now I'm just picking out the ephemera bits I love the colors the color combinations I'm not sure whether I'm not sure what colors these are I don't know if the packaging said um, but I'm pulling out a variety of different colors. I definitely want to get some of that coral color in there. I loved these pink flowers because I felt like they were really bright. 
and I loved yellow. I always love including some yellow florals, no matter what color I'm using. I pulled out some of the leafy bits, and I'm just gonna start laying these out. Now, I like to have three ephemera clusters, and I always try to arrange them in a triangle because it gives me that visual triangle that, that art teachers are always talking about, and I like to put that triangle so that my journaling and my photos are inside the triangle. So the, those ephemera clusters will pull your eye into the photos and the um, journaling. So notice that I started out with my three largest ephemera pieces, and then I start tucking smaller pieces in around them. And I'm pulling out these leaves here. I'm gonna do something I would never have done a few years ago, and that is I'm gonna cut that pre-made die into two pieces and use it as two separate pieces on my layout. I learned this from Vicki Booten. Um, she calls putting the ephemera and the other stuff down, putting the jewelry on, and I love that. It always, I always feel like that's what I'm doing. This is where I'm decorating my page, and she always did things like cut things in half and, you know, um, use it that way. So make it work for your layout. So I just fuss with things till I get it the way I want to, and then I will add some foam dimensionals behind some of these pieces. Some will get glued directly on, and um, I will just tuck things around each other. So I'm gonna add a little foam dimensional, especially where it overlaps my photo, and I'm not taking the backing off that foam dimensional. So I can still tuck my photo underneath, and if I remember when I stick my photo on, I will remove the backing. If not, there's more adhesive on the back of that ephemera piece that will work. So I'm just adding these pieces all around, and just kind of like rearranging it. Now, another thing that I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get all the colors in each ephemera cluster. You can see I have that bright green. I'm not sure which one of the new, I think that's one of the new, or the two new in colors, I'm not really sure. But I want that bright green in every cluster. I've got the pink in every cluster. I've got a little bit of yellow in every cluster. And I've got a lot of that coral around my page as well. So I'm trying to um, make it pretty uniform. And I also have a bit of this olivey toned green all around in each one of the clusters. And I really like having a variety of greens in each cluster as well. So I'm gonna do the same thing here. So I try to make sure that whatever part is overhanging my photo mat, since I don't have my photos ready to go on this page yet, that I'm not putting sticky adhesive on that. So the foam dots are there with the backing still on them where the photo is so that when I go to put the photo in, I can just slide it under the ephemera bits. I don't have to try to lift them and remove adhesive from something. So I'm just kind of tucking this in or trying to find the way it works the best so I can see the most color. Here's where I'm adding all the color and interesting parts to my layout here. I love how this is going together and I really like all these colors together. Now I did go ahead and color in some of those um, birds, and this is a branch that I colored in with my Stampin' Blends. I fussy cut that out. The challenge for this month at uh, the Challenge Yourself Scrapbook Challenge is fussy cutting. So I fussy cut, uh, cut out all these birds, and I try to color them in not very neatly. And the reason that I did that is because I feel like they're very whimsical, so I wanted my coloring to still feel whimsical and very imperfect. And I love these little birds. I think they're so much fun. I know I'm gonna use these a lot. But I've got that stack of books and the glasses, so for sure I'll be doing some layouts about the books that I'm reading this month. 
I do that every month and either I'll do that as a 12 by 12 layout or I'll do that in my traveler's notebook. It's one of my favorite um, spreads to do in a traveler's notebook. So I'm just making sure now that I have a bird in each spot and I'm putting a little bird uh, next to my journaling box there and just trying to decide which one of these adorable birds to use. I think this is just the super fun part. And you can see I I did not do like a dark color around the outside and then light on the inside. I mixed my browns and my blues. I mixed my yellows and my oranges and my browns. Like I really tried to make them interesting colors. And if you want them to be really whimsical, make your birds purple and you know, do colors you might not actually see a bird around where you live. And I'm just putting the paper backing back on my dimensional so I can slide my uh, photos under. Now I'm adding um, some enamel dots and these are very old enamel dots. They were a package of subtle, soft subtles and um, the colors, most of the colors probably aren't even Stampin' Up! colors anymore, but they will work just fine. Calypso color, Coral is still a color, so I'm using that. And I think the other one is either, it might be Pear Pizzazz. Old Olive was not a soft, subtle, I don't think. And I used the dots on the other layout to coordinate with this, so I'm using stars here. I just, I'm adding these for color. And um, I did add some splatter bits and a title on my other layout. But on this layout, I think you can see I cut the title out with that mini alpha set. And I used a scrap of that blue denim paper and created my little project. There's me with the shawl I made for myself. Isn't it beautiful? I just started learning to crochet in October. I'm so proud of the projects I'm making. And um, I use the little um, Happy Little Things die under the crochet to do a crochet looks like this sentiment. And you can see I used a different one of the sets of the um, something fancy dies for my journaling on the other page. And on this page, I'm going to add some photos of myself in my new crocheted poncho. Yes, I am. I also made myself a beautiful poncho, which can I tell you, coordinates, the yarn coordinates with that blue paper. I did forget to tuck in. I wanted to put a little um, band across there. I had that in my um, sketch. Now this is pretty different than my sketch because in my sketch, the paper was the paper was probably 11 inches square, but I would have cut and cut those at four by 11 and seven by 11. Um, on if I was looking really trying to copy the sketch exactly, but the sketch for me, even though I made the sketch, it's just a suggestion. And you can see that I've got those two pages laid out slightly differently. On the other one, um, the blue piece is smaller and it goes toward the top. The picture panel is up toward the top. My, my, um, my florals are pretty much exactly the same. My birds are completely different birds and I colored them differently. Um, but I love the way this came out. And I do have a few splatters. No, maybe I don't have the splatters on there. I was going to stamp some splatters and forgot to do that, I think. I got so excited about the birds. And I love the ephemera package. I, As soon as I finished this, I went ahead and ordered a couple more of the other ephemera packages because I love it. So thanks for watching, friends. Give this video a thumbs up and have a very creative day. Thanks for watching.